Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar, and today we're going to talk about the Jewish interpretation of the next world. And that's very important because uh, many people jump on, well, Jewish, meaning only Jews are going to be around in the next world, and that's not true. And we're going to discuss that right now, as that the Jewish view of the next world, how it pertains to the Gentiles. Now, first of all, we have to start from the beginning. What is the next world? What's going to happen? And then we can see how we all fit into it. Now, this idea, first of all, is a very Jewish idea. And I know many religions and many ideas and even humanistic ideas that the ultimate utopia of the world, well, there'll be peace and there'll be abundance and nobody's fighting and arguing with each other. It's a very beautiful idea, to say the least, but it's a very Jewish idea. It's one of the ideas that Jewish uh, religion and ideas have a philosophy has given to the entire world and they picked up on this but the truth of the matter is how are we going to attain it obviously it's a worthy goal to say the very least no one's going to argue with that but on the other hand how are we going to get there so many times in the humanistic world in the secular world that set up a league of nations set up the united nations if we just talk out our problems everything will be fine uh, but you know, I mean, look around the world doesn't take too much of a philosopher to look around the world, and we still have troubles. We've gone through many wars, the past century, World War One, World War Two, and a lot of smaller skirmishes, to say the least. And there's nothing small about them. Thousands of people have died. But um, on the other hand, here we are in the 21st century, and, you know, people are still fighting. You know, what has been really accomplished? People are screaming, wipe these people out, and it's going to be a nuclear war. People are talking about what have we really accomplished. So therefore, Judaism steps in and has the answer. And ultimately, that's what they talk about is the Mashiach, the Messiah, which will bring peace and abundance to everyone. I mean, it'll be a, it will be a human being. That's very important because many people will argue and say, well, it's an idea, messianic idea, like I say, utopia. But Judaism says, no, there will be, have to be one person and that will bring this utopian state to the world. Now, who will he be? I mean, I don't know and nobody really knows, but we're going to talk uh, about the basic turn to the basic idea of Judaism and you can't get more basic than Maimonides. He was the, ba the most important scholar, the codified Jewish law, and at the end of his whole uh, Oedipus of, uh, you know, of, of the encyclopedia of learning that he talks about the Messiah. So let's talk, look at what he has to say. And he says that uh, the Messiah will be a man, and many people have different ideas about this, but this is what the Maimonides says, will be a man, will be uh, from the tribe of Judah, just a very small idea just to explain it that there was one Jewish people but when they left Egypt they were subdivided into 12 tribes from the 12 sons of Jacob and um, the times hundreds of years later that David was the king and uh, God said you're the man you're the king and they're going to give you a presence for all your descendants afterwards so therefore the Messiah who will be a king will be from the Davidic dynasty, from David, which, like I said, came from the tribe of Judah. That's a one other qualification. He's going to be very learned. He's not going to be some guy who off the street, a rabble rouser, or just a military leader. He will be very learned. He will be very um, intellectual and knowing the Torah fully. And then he has three basic jobs that we know for sure is the Messiah. There were many Messiahs in Jewish history. They thought they were Messiahs, and people thought they were Messiah. But, you know, here we are today in the 21st century, like I say, and um, peace has eluded us, to say the very least. Uh, so in any case, what he's supposed to do is bring all the Jewish people back to Israel, and I mean, even though, again, many people say, well, we do have Israel already. 
Many refugees have come to, to, to Israel from Europe, from Russia. But still, there are many problems in Israel. Again, just looking at the headlines, to say the very least, it's not what we're looking for in the Messiah. We want peace in the world and not just constant infighting from the neighbors. We want to get along with everybody and everybody should be peaceful. So that would be one idea of bringing all the Jewish people back to Israel, ultimately bringing back, rebuilding the base of Mikdash, which is the temple in Israel. People go to Israel, and I know the truth of the matter is that most, the majority of visitors to Israel are not Jewish. This is just a fact. I mean, Israel is a holy land for everybody, and many, many people go to Israel. And if you've gone to Israel, then you've, Hopefully you've seen the major part is the way in Jerusalem, the wall, the Western Wall. So you, and it's a very holy site because that's the only part of the temple that is still standing. So that's, well, right now all you have is a wall. You want a whole building, obviously. And uh, therefore that we're going to wait for the Messiah to rebuild that temple in Jerusalem. And uh, he's got to bring all the Jewish people back and make them religious again, which again, we're seeing little semblances of this nowadays that we see, and like we said, obviously the many, many Jewish people, I think the, the most Jewish people in the world live in Israel. So the, we are seeing this now for the last hundred years, people are going to Israel, and um, many times we do see abundance, and I know that there's people that uh, need food. I know that very well. We have charity funds, of course, so we help people out. But, you know, there's 7 billion people in the world, and most people are eating and being sustained by the world. So we do see a, some form of abundance in the world. And But I just say peace is very elusive. But So therefore, we are waiting. The Messiah and is very important. Now, again, our point was where do the Gentiles fit into this Judaic view. It's very interesting. Let's go back to the Maimonides. Again, very, very basic Judaism. He said not only will the Jews have the next world, but he said that the, and these are, I'm, I'll give you the Hebrew words and of course translate them, Chassidi Umasolam, the Chassidim meaning the pious. It's a very strong word in Judaism. The pious of the non-Jews will have the next world. And that means that the people that we're talking about, the seven mitzvahs, and they're called B'nai Noach because the people from Noach, I mean Adam was the first man, but pretty much everybody was wiped out except for Noah and his children. So really, in a way, humanity all comes from Noach in that sense. And he has seven commandments. Don't kill, don't steal, don't blaspheme God, don't believe in an idol, uh, that uh, set up a court system and aver menachai, which means a limb from a live animal. So if someone keeps those seven commandments and they know that God's in charge of the world and, and the Torah was given through uh, Moses and that's where the laws all come from, then the, the person says they get the next world. Again, evil people do not get the next world, but any good people who believe these basic laws of really humanity, I don't know if anybody doesn't hold by don't kill, don't steal, and, uh, you know, swearing to God, so these ideas that if a person has these basic ideas of belief, and you can say, and you say again, using a Yiddish word, a mensch, that a good person, then they will inherit the next world and they will be there. The difference is, is that the Jewish people are the chosen people to teach the world. And the Jewish people, I give an example like a teacher and the students. You come into a classroom, the teacher, maybe in the old days they would stand up for the, the teacher. I don't know if that, that happens nowadays. But in any case, the teacher knows more than the students. Obviously, that's why you could define the teachers and students. So when the teacher comes into the classroom, he doesn't talk to people, oh, you dumbbells, you idiots, you don't know anything, you know how smart I am. It's not the way a teacher comes into a classroom. That's ridiculous. That's not the, the proper attitude. And the students are, and, and using a Yiddish word, chutzpah, you know, audacity. Oh, well, I know as much as you, I'll tell the teacher. Hey, you be humble and you learn. But this is the way, it's a learning process. Doesn't mean the teacher lords it over the students. 
On the other hand, the, t the, the students have to listen to the teacher, what the teacher has to say. And that's very important for the, for the, 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 for the people, the Jewish people were given the Torah, they call, they're called, you're the wisdom and understanding amongst the nations. So therefore you should be a, uh, teaching people and instructing them. Now I'm going to tell you a very, very deep mystical idea of a prophecy. And it says this, that before the Messiah comes, this is from the Zohar. That's why I say it's a prophecy because it was written 2,000 years ago. And he was talking about our times today. So obviously it was a prophecy. It goes like this. And this is from, and we were just talking about Noah and the flood. So the actual sense in the Bible is in the 600th year of Noah, I mean, because people lived a long time in the olden days, olden thousands of years ago, that in the 600th year of Noah's life, the flood, the gates of the, the, the heavens were opened up, and there was rain, and on the other hand, to home robber, people don't, they just get the basic story, they don't really get this. That's why I'm telling you that if you really look in, it said from the water, from the oceans, from below, to home robber, the very deep, literally, would raise up. And someone was telling me, you learn from everybody, people told me that they found under the earth, under, I don't know how deep, that there's bigger oceans than we have oceans, you know, our oceans, Atlantic and Pacific. There's so much water down deep underneath bigger oceans. So, you know, say, well, where did the water come from to flood the earth? Here it is. And again, modern science has just uh, found out that there is incredible amount of water underneath the earth. So, saying that, that there's um, water from both parts, the Zohar says that water is like wisdom, like it flows, knowledge flows like water. So when they say water, it's like knowledge. They say that before the, the Messiah comes, the water from above, the holy understanding of water, I mean the holy ideas, will flow like a flood, not just flow, but flood the world. And the knowledge from below, the secular wisdoms, will also flood the earth. I mean, flood in a good way. There'll be so much knowledge all over the place. And indeed, we don't have to um, look too much uh, further than around us. And we see that in Torah, that the deepest mystical secrets are revealed. It's almost what I was just telling you before. The Zohar was kept, the Jewish mysticism was kept to an elite few. It's almost like a postgraduate course, if you want to use that example. The very few people and the secular wisdom, again, look around us for the last few hundred years. It's the 600th year to the 6th millennium, as the Zohar says, which is a few hundred years ago. Uh, the knowledge has burst open. I just even, again, someone just recently told me, you know, I always kid everybody, I'm 29 years old. But in any case, in our lifetime, meaning the last 50 years, you have seen more innovations and in discovery than than was equal to anything before him for thousands of years of humanity. So it's literally like a flood of idea uh, that was um, brought into this world and right before the Messiah. And that really tells us that the Messiah is really coming when all this knowledge from above, meaning the Torah, the deeper secrets, mystical ideas, been flooding the world. And from below, the secular wisdoms are also. And that's, the point is, is just that there's a point to that. It's not just where it's cute and it's nice and like they have my computer on, and etc. But this, this is an advent to the Mashiach, the Messiah, because look at the secular wisdom. What do we have today? That, I mean, all right, even the last 100, 150 years ago, it's even more than today. But if someone would tell you, that God sees all and hears all. He says, well, you know, I mean, they, maybe you would believe it a hundred thousands of years ago, but what does it mean? How can I don't see a person? I don't see, I mean, God's not a person, but even if I don't see a person, how could anybody um, see me or hear me? And we all know, I mean, again, we could have the telephone hundreds of years ago. Today, there's satellites that pick up every word. Everything is written down couldn't see in you know, hundreds of years ago. How could you write down every word that every person said? It's impossible. You have a few scrolls and a few books. How could every little word that every human being said 
be recorded. It's you know it would just be a fantasy in their in anybody's eyes. But now, now if I say that, you say yeah, these uh, incredible computers nowadays, and they probably are doing it. Every telephone call and every message, everything that is being said, is all recorded, and they can see you. And that's again not anything that's like I mean again for the audience nowadays, a hundred years ago, fifty years ago, maybe there would be news. But everybody knows there's satellites picking up every idea and, and they're watching you on every street corner. And either, I mean, maybe you can see a camera on the street corner, but the satellites, you surely don't see them. So again, this is just an, an idea to help us realize that there's a God in the world. And just because you don't see him doesn't mean he doesn't see you, which is a lot of people's philosophies in life. I don't see God. Well, that means he doesn't see me. If, and that's, of course not true and this idea which of course we're televising now and we're showing these ideas around the world that people have these computers and you can say one thing in one part of the world and be seen and be heard all around the world simultaneously and this is incredible when you think about it maybe uh, people who are young that just were raised this way people in my age I mean if you think about how incredible it really is is a tremendous idea but it's all for a purpose of showing, bringing out these beautiful ideas and not just for comedy acts and making everybody laugh, but it's in order for the knowledge to be spread out into the entire world. And that's an important point of this idea that when Noah, again, uh, I don't know if he knew about it, but it says in the Bible about Noah that there's going to be a flood of the world before the Messiah comes. You know, again, we don't have to be a prophet. We just have to look around in the world around us and see what's uh, happening. And it's interesting just to go back to the Maimonides, which, like I say, is so, so basic. And um, it's very deep. I mean, basic, I don't mean like it's first grade, but it's just for very primary and fundamental in learning. Very, very deep ideas. And the last sense that the Maimonides talks about it's a sense from Isaiah. This is how it concludes. Again, and if I would put it on the table, it would be this big, an incredible, incredible accomplishment that the Maimonides codified entire Jewish law. I mean, the, the, it's a tremendous feat, to say the very least. And um, he ends up, the roll called boss, it's from Isaiah, all flesh will see. Now, there's again, every word is exact. It has to be analyzed. It didn't say they'll believe in God. They will see the Varsham, the Word of God. They'll all see the Word of God, how it's giving everybody life. And it says it didn't say every mind will understand. You could say when someone talks, you say, "Yeah, I see what you're saying." Well, seeing is that could be in the mind's eye, but it's really seeing in your actual seeing with your physical eye that you'll be able to see godliness in the world, how it's creating everything. This idea that is very special. I mean, we hope for it and we pray for it to be very soon. But on the other hand, we see ideas beforehand. It's an interesting Jewish law and everything. I'll tell you the basic law. And then again, everything has a deeper meaning to everything in this world. And it says that before the Sabbath day, that you're supposed to taste something. You know, you make good foods for Friday night for our Sabbath and therefore you taste a little bit beforehand. So that's the saying, there are seven, again, when we say there's over 5,700 years in the world, and they we're in the sixth millennium, follow this, 6,000 years, there's seven days to creation, basic Bible idea, and there are seven millenniums, 7,000 years, and every day of the creation pertains and corresponds that specific day. So therefore we're in the sixth millennium which means we correspond to the sixth day and we're very much near the end because we say only a few hundred years, 200 years out of a thousand is very much near the end. We're in the last so almost 20 percent of the day very close to the end and therefore that we can see a little bit a taste again go back to that law we're giving a taste of what's going to happen for example, in the Sabbath day, meaning the day of rest, the day of peace, there's peace on Sabbath, there's good food on the Sabbath, 
and these are Shabbos Shalom, you say, peaceful Shabbos. So we're going to see that uh, there's going to be total peace, but we're getting a little bit of a taste right now. We're seeing a little bit of these deeper ideas, of these uh, Kabbalahs to open to every person we know, which is Jewish mysticism, the secrets of the world. Again, I said before that this is only for very special people in the olden days, and now anybody but anybody is able to learn about these ideas. Again, the secular wisdom is open, the abundance, the incredible ideas with science is innovative. People on the moon, they're talking about going to the Mars. I mean, these were fairy tales hundreds of years ago. If a person would be in a time machine in the 21st century, go back 200 years, and you know, people would ask, oh, you're from the 21st century? Tell us all about it. And again, you know, you can make up your own story because just look around you. Yeah, we have television, telephone, we go to the moon, we fly here, we fly there. I mean, you can make up your own story. Just look at the round of the computer. I have the whole encyclopedia in, my, in the palm of my hand with a handheld. They probably put you in a loony bin. They'd say you're, you're on drugs, who knows, you're fantasizing, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, on the other hand, we know that's totally true. But that's what I'm saying. We're almost, if you're looking in that perception, that we're almost like in a fairy tale and we are in the messianic era. Again, a lot more to do. Let's say everything's Pollyannish and everything is perfect now. That's not true. But every person has a part in this if they have a truly a good life. And the blessings come, it's a system. Meaning that if you, God gave us a system to live by and you'll be happy. For example, you have to eat. Everybody knows that. So what if you eat the wrong food? I don't know, dirt or poison. You got sick. You say, well, what happened? I ate what I wanted to. Well, that's not food for a human being. And you're going to eat that, you know, poison or mud. I don't know what. You know, you're going to get sick. There's food that fits to a human being. And if you don't eat that kind of food, maybe it's good for an animal and maybe it's good for something else. A plant likes its dirt, but it's not for us. And you have to eat and do what's for us. And then you'll be strong and fit and you'll be healthy if you eat the right foods. Well, it's the same thing in, even in life. That God gave us the Torah and gave us the proper way to live and gave us to tell the Gentiles how to live also. They are not obligated to do all the Torah and the mitzvahs. There are 613 commandments for the Jewish people. They don't have to do all that. They don't have to keep the Sabbath like a Jewish person. They don't have kosher laws except for the wise how to live from a live animal. But a person lives that way. They have a good life and a healthy life and, and everything will go fine. And again, I mean, to me, I see it in fact that people lead good lives, they, I mean, not 100%. We always talk about it, about why bad things happen to good people or good things happen to bad people. But for the most, most part, I think you can see it yourself, and I surely do, that if you do the right thing and you live the right kind of life, you will be happy and everything will be good. And ultimately, we all hope for ultimate peace. I mean, any normal person does. Uh, peace and abundance. We don't want to see anybody starving and everybody should have good. And that ultimately God wants that for us also. He's not mean and you have all these philosophies and what's he doing with us. But we have to accomplish. And that's also, and to conclude with that a kind of idea, is just that why are we here? Why are we a world? And like I said, it's not perfect to say the least. There is suffering, so why did God want us here? And it's called, again, a Zohar, a Jewish mystical idea. It's called Nama Sufa, the bread of shame. Meaning if you're given everything in life and everything is easy and you don't have meaning in life, you could say, well, I haven't made. But you see, that that's not ultimately how a human being is made either. I mean, you got to do the right thing, but you have to accomplish. But just by definition, if you accomplish, that means there's a challenge. If they're challenged, that means things are difficult. These are all basic definitions. So you could say, oh man, this is work. Oh man, why did I have to do this? Wouldn't it be easier to sit around doing nothing? Maybe it would, but you wouldn't have the feeling, and that's why I use the word accomplishments in life, of what it has to be done or not done in the world. When you know that you accomplish something, you feel darn good about it. I always give the example, and you know, like I say, like I put a light bulb in a, <laughs> that's my big handyman, uh, ways of doing things. 
but once I had to put something together, the small little thing you buy in these discount stores, and I put it together, a big accomplishment for me, and I was looking at, wow, you know, the way I put the screw in and the screw, I, I didn't put it, you know, it should be a little bit more of this. I says, I look at that when I just caught myself. Here's a, it's right next to a beautiful piece of furniture that I paid a lot of money for, and I'm not looking at it. Nice, okay, I bought it, and it sits in the room, fine, beautiful. And here it is, piece of, you know, I hate to say it's probably half a piece of junk, you know, that I made, and I put some screws in it, and that's my big accomplishment. I'm looking at it, oh, I made it so nice. This is like crazy. This thing is nothing compared to this fine piece of furniture. But again, that's, that showed me, and it truly is the idea that if you accomplish something, you'd rather have something by yourself that you accomplished more than it, that someone was given to you. So that's also why we are in this world. There are things to accomplish, make it better, but ultimately we want the reward for what we, we accomplished. You want to get paid after a, a, you know, a day's work, a week's work. You want to get paid, and we hopefully that that we set the advent to coming to Messiah, which we see signs all around us that's going to happen. It'll be a good life for every person, and, and again, not only the Jewish people, for the Gentiles who keep the, the the mitzvahs, the commandments that they were commanded to, which are basically keeping good, humane laws that from the Torah that was given to Moses that he wants everybody to have a good life, and we should all uh, see that together in a good with blessing. Thank you very much.